would the clerk take the roll? District 1, Barbara McQuinn. Here. District 2, Chuck Shaw. Here. District 3, Karen Brill. Here. District 4, Erica Whitfield. Here. District 5, Frank Barbieri. Here. District 6, Marsha Andrews. Here. District 7, Deborah Robinson. All right, we also have President Manuel with us this evening. Hello there. All right, Mr. Superintendent. Yes, sir. Our first workshop for today um, is the 2020 Census Workshop. At this time, I'll turn over the presentation to Chris Garrison, our Director of Planning and Intergovernmental Relations. Ladies and gentlemen, you can begin. Thank you, Dr. Fenoy, uh, Chairman Barbieri, and members of the school board. Uh, given the importance of the 2020 Census, uh, the Executive Cabinet, uh, with your consent through resolution, established a complete count committee internal to the school district with a liaison to the county's efforts. I'd like to acknowledge um, some of the representatives that are here from the Complete Count Committee, representing about 10 departments throughout the district. To my left, I have Lisa De La, I mean, excuse me, <laughs> Lisa Carmona, excuse me. We will get to Lisa De La, De La Ronda in a moment. Um, from the Office of General Counsel, I have Diana Snyder from uh, the Teaching and Learning. I have Claudia from uh, Communications, and I have Harvey from Multicultural. And then on the, my far right is our liaison to the uh, U.S. Census Bureau, uh, Gary Richardson. And he's here if, uh, to help me with questions that we can't cover ourselves. I'd also like to acknowledge uh, to my left, sitting in the front row reserve seating, we do have Lisa De La Ronda, who's heading up the county's complete count efforts, accompanied by Ed Chase, who's ass assisting with outreach. Uh, I also have a couple of visitors representing the League of Women Voters Complete Count Committee. So just a few of our partners have joined us here today. Census 101, what you need to know. The, um, first of all, the census is mandated by the U.S. Constitution, so it's each one of our uh, civic responsibilities to participate in the census. Unlike our prior referendum efforts where we had to be careful not to venture from education and advocacy, it's certainly our role as educators and as um, stakeholders in the community to encourage participation in the, in the uh, census. The uh, census originally was established to apportion appropriate representation on the U.S. House of Representatives. And this is a particularly important in a growing state like Florida. The last census, we gained two seats. And this time around, we're expecting to gain some more. And you may remember, we used the census data 10 years ago to redraw the school board member districts. So that data is used for legislative districts throughout the country following the release of the data. Also important to school districts and to local communities is the fact that census data is used to inform funding of hundreds of billions of dollars. This slide I, I, I borrowed from the county where they calculated what they believe the impact of each person counted in the census is. It's estimated to be about $1,600. If you assume 1.5 million population in Palm Beach County, that's $2.4 billion year after year, and over the 10-year period, that would be about $24 billion for this county. The school district loan in FY18 received $220 million in federal funding, including the school lunch program and Title I. Hey, the census this time is going to be a lot easier to um, participate in. New this year is an online uh, method to, uh, to respond to the census, so a phone, a tablet, any kind of device that accesses the inter internet can be used. And this is going to be the preferred mode, and a lot of our efforts will be to support that effort to have the online participation. Additionally, a phone, a phone call is available in up to 19 languages, so that's another easy way to participate. And of course, you have the, the traditional paper request that you can make. If all of those um, modes do not result in participation, then, then the enumerator from the Census Bureau is going to start um, lock, knocking on your door. There are nine primary questions, and it's very important to note that there is no citizenship question on the, um, on the form. There will be staggered mailings beginning in mid-March, so we're going to be really um, prominent in our communication tools 
in, in around that time, before that time and around that time to participate, participation, uh, excuse me, to encourage participation. Because of the online mode, libraries will play a critical role this time around, and the, the library director for Palm Beach County is fully engaged in these efforts. And it's also important to note that census data uh, is private. It's protected by federal law, and U.S. Census workers are not permitted to share any individually identifiable data with anyone, including law enforcement officers. So it's very similar to our uh, student privacy laws, but even more, um, more stringent than those. This next slide illustrates the number of situations where children could be undercounted. For example, newborn infants, a lot of times families don't, don't realize that you need to include them in your census. Uh, what we have a lot of in Palm Beach County, multi-generational households or multiple families living in a household might be others, or people who have recently moved, or, or children that spend part of their time in different households. So we'll be working to educate our parents about what to count and make sure that everyone is counted. Now I'm gonna move on to um, have my colleagues share with you some of the good work that's been done uh, towards the uh, desire to get full participation in our county. I'm gonna turn it over to um, Diana. This is a snapshot of the instructional resources that we've created and provided for all of our teachers, K-12, across many content areas, and this is just a snapshot. Additional snapshots are available in the appendix. And then we also had a poster contest, and these are the three winning posters for elementary, middle, and high, and the students will be recognized at the February 19th board meeting. Okay, and moving on to communications, what our role has been in this is working with the U.S. Census logo and their slogan and kind of making it our own. So count me in, Palm Beach County is ours. And if anyone would like to use this particular logo on their signature line, it's available on the hub under marketing resources. And we do have it in four different languages. So this is really our call to action. Count me in, Palm Beach County. And... Um, as you just heard from Chris, we're, we're going out and we're, it's a whole different approach than we did with the referendum where that was education, but with this we legally are able to encourage people to go out and get registered. And the last thing I would think that most people want is to have somebody knocking on their door. So starting mid-March, you can go online and you can just be counted that way. But in the meantime, we're, uh, we're providing all of this collateral. If you could click to the next one. This is an idea of what some of the imagery looks like. So communications has already completed all of this in all of our languages. We are ready with the push of a button to start sending this out to parents. We have something in the principal toolkit. It's a whole marketing package where if elementary school teachers would like to create flyers and send them home with children, they could do that. We're also going to be creating posters that we'll be putting up here at the DAC and um, also at some of the ancillary facilities throughout the district just to get everyone aware that this is going on. The big push for us in the next couple of weeks is just to make people aware before the official day when everything really kicks kicks off, which is officially April 1st, correct? Right. But we're getting the word out way earlier than that. Uh, if we can go on to the next. Okay, and then this is just an idea of what some of our social media will look like. We're using our own children, not stock photography, as much as possible. So, you know, it, it, it's authentic. And uh, again, so we're going to be pushing all of this out on Facebook. So you'll see longer content on Facebook, Instagram. Um, Snapchat, any means we can. We also have several electronic newsletters that you know that the uh, communications department puts out every week in three different languages, so it'll be going out that way as well. And any advice that you guys would like to share, any other means, we'd be happy to do that as well. As far as going out into the community and spreading the message that way, the county will be doing a lot of that work, working with the Children's Services Council, working with faith-based institutions. So that's just a, another great way that families will be getting this information. So in, in an effort to really talk about what we would consider maybe our potentially harder to reach populations, uh, populations within our county that we want to make sure uh, have the right information and not misinformation. Uh, we 
are working on a different kind of a campaign where it's more face-to-face -to, -face to help that uh, trusted voice. And so I'm just kind of going to talk about some highlights from the multicultural migrant teams, knowing that we've been in collaboration with our federal and state programs as well. So our Title I department are doing a lot of very similar things that we're doing just in um, their populations as well. So the, the following winter, we started a little earlier, really trying to do a kind of an overview campaign, like this is what the census is, this is what it's not. Um, really, again, like I said, combating misinformation and trying to help calm fears around the census. And so all of these events were all face-to-face -face and um, really targeted throughout the district for a variety of different types of things that we're working on. And so then as we move into the fall, I mean the winter and spring, we are kind of changing our focus from more of a what is it and what is it not to a not only what is it, but also how do we participate in the census. And so I want to highlight three different things that we're doing specifically to target um, our more uh, potentially harder to reach families. And so one is our community language facilitators. As you know, um, they work directly with schools and with families in the schools, and they're kind of our conduits to our popu populations that uh, may not speak English, and, uh, as, and so making sure that they understand uh, and so we've just done some trainings with them in Russian, Kanhobald, Mom, Kiche, Spanish, Haitian Creole, uh, to help them understand, wh again, what is the census, what is it not, what are the things that we need to ensure that um, families understand about it, and then how to actually participate. The other thing we've done is some of our work is around specific college tours for targeted populations. Our mic, for example, we have a migrant college tour where we have some specific students who went to learn about secondary, post-secondary options, and we talked to really during that time about not only why is it important to you as a student, but why would it be important to you as a family? And so trying to help them as high schoolers really advocate uh, to go back and say, mom and dad, grandparents, this is actually important and why it's important and how they can participate. And then one of the other things that we're doing, um, as Claudia said, the county is doing a lot of work, as you know, in the uh, the libraries, the county libraries, you can go, anybody can go and complete this and, uh, the census online. And so we're going to be having what we call census days um, at the Welcome Center and at the Migrant East and Migrant West offices once the invitations actually go out. Again, just to provide another opportunity, uh, we want parents to know and families to know that every address is going to be counted. And if you'd prefer someone not to come to your house, then here's some other options for you so to make sure you get counted. And so we'll be doing those um, at the Welcome Center and the Migrant East and West offices. And and then um, I just want to highlight that in our appendix, we have been working really with our ongoing partnerships with other entities without the throughout the district, student government being one of them. And so um, I'll hand it back over to Chris. Thank you. Uh, we do have a lot of additional slides in the appendix in the interest of keeping this presentation short. So certainly peruse that uh, as your time allows. At this time, we'd be open to discussion. Mrs. Whitfield. Thank you. First of all, I want to say thank you guys so much for bringing this to us. Um, this is so unbelievably important. And I know in my town, we were undercounted by like 20,000 last time. And it just, um, it makes such a difference in what um, we can provide to our citizens, which is just, and in our residents, anybody who lives here. So um, one thing that I kind of had envisioned for this that I think would be amazing if we could pull it off would be that the schools, since they're so trusted, actually set up a computer for people to come and enter their information there. Um, I know this could be a challenge. Some of my principals have already said they're gonna try to do something like that in um, in Lake Worth, because we've talked about the, the struggles that they have. Um, but our, our schools are, are trusted by families who are not documented, and they will um, come and give information there when they wouldn't in other places. So I, don't, I mean, we have so many events that happen at schools. If we just, during a, a few of the events in, in April, had computers set up, I think it would be amazing. So I'm, I'm just asking staff if that's something that we can do, and if that's something we could put out, especially to our, our really struggling schools that, are, that we need to get those kids counted. Ms. Brill and Mrs. Andrews. Thank you. So for the, um, first of all, thank you very much. I've heard a lot of the presentations. Some of you know I'm always around the county in different meetings and hearing this quite a bit. And each time I pick up on something new. So when you're doing the face-to-face, -face, can you please let the people who are going to, to be going out know that they should put Caridad on their list if it's not already? Um, because there are a lot of young children not in our schools. It's in the West Boynton area, though the migrant population has shifted. They're still a very active center 
um, and they provide health and medical treatment to children that are under the age that we s start serving them. So they should be on your list. And then I know that the census, everyone counts who's alive, but sitting next to my very pregnant colleague, um, <laughs> when you have a, someone who's pregnant, and especially someone who's due like right around that time, are they able to count their soon-to-be child or the child has to be born? I'm going to let Gary Richardson field that one. <laughs> April 1st, oh, sorry, too close. April 1st, 11.59 p.m., before that time. <laughs> this is the official answer. Before that time, they are counted. <laughs> April 2nd, they are, they are counted in the following census in, in 2030. Thank you. <laughs> no pressure there, Mrs. Whitfield. <laughs> no pressure. Mrs. Andrews. And thank you, and thank you for actually uh, utilizing the information from the Council of Great City Schools, who as actually at the national level, really working with districts all across the United States. And our partners in every city, they have a program, the county and all of the agencies, so we are connected with all of them. But one of the things I was thinking that we might be able to do is how do we actually know for sure if they have been counted, and especially the students, because these are the ones that are mostly uh, undercounted. Is there a way that we could have um, some kind of pin or some kind of something that a child could wear? I've been counted, you know, and they could wear it throughout that time of the census uh, count. Teachers uh, could kind of see, and if they didn't have one of those little little uh, tickets on that they can wear on there, you know, I've been counted, you know, and something special happening at the school, and, and it can be a continuous thing. You know, you may have been, five kids may already be counted by a certain point, but then as you kind of go through the timeline, 10 and so on and so on, and then celebrate them each time. And when we find out that maybe a kid has not been counted or a parent has not been actually connected with, then we can put together some of the things that we have in this packet to make sure that we meet them. And it doesn't have to be anything expensive, but something that we can tag and we can celebrate each time our numbers get higher and higher and higher in a particular classroom. Is that something that you can do? There, there is a confirmation page. If you do an internet self-response, which is going online and filling out your census, you will have a confirmation page that can be printed, that can be taken, a, a screenshot could be taken, or a picture could be taken of that as well. So they could say, yes, I have been counted. Uh, the follow-up to that also, which goes into new information um, that just came out last week, is that we will be able to see those internet self-responses in live time. So we'll be able to target populations that, um, or areas that might not be responding and we'll be working with the county and municipalities to, to respond to that um, immediately the day after as well. Um, but I would say encouraging um, the, the parents, if, you, if there's some sort of competitions and cities and towns are doing this, to say, you know, make sure you print that out, print out that confirmation, that you take a screenshot of it, that you take a screenshot on your phone, or you take a picture of that, that you've completed the census. You have a follow-up, Mrs. Andrews? Yes, I was just trying to figure out a way that it could be done in the school center, too. Yes, I'm happy that the parents can get it. You got that screenshot and everything. But a way that it can translate back to the school. Kind of like the I voted stickers. If we could do, you know, I've been counted stickers. Mm -hmm. And when, when children tell their teacher, my parents took part in this and we were all counted, you know, maybe we can make, it, it would be very inexpensive to make sheets and sheets of I've been counted and hand out to the children. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. um, Ms. Brill, you were next. Thank you, and I do have something else to say. So um, seeing some of our friends here from Toussaint Louverture made me realize I had a couple of questions. One is making sure that we, if we can, disseminate this information to our charter schools, number one, and then schools like Toussaint Louverture um, can help dis disseminate the information to their population, also to those advocacy groups, the Hispanic Education Coalition and also the Haitian Education Group, because those are populations 
a lot of them are going to be afraid to, f to complete the forms, and we want to make sure that they know that, you know, as we had said before, no citizenship information is going to be released, uh, asked, and that the information will not go to the government. And that's going to be a challenge with a lot of our schools. So we need to have those partnerships with those groups, too. Thank you. In indeed, and I'm pleased to report that our charter school director is on the Complete Count Committee, and uh, Mr. Richardson has gone to at least one meeting and has visited a number of charter schools. So we are including that out outreach. Thank you. Dr. Robinson. Thank you. Um, several comments and questions. So the first thing is, I'm sorry, I wasn't paying close enough of attention. What's the, the date range? So I ha should have in my appendix a timeline. So uh, okay. mid-March, on or about March 12th, the mail-outs will start to occur in cohorts. Okay. And so I guess based on the response rate, then additional mail-outs will happen. That's why we need to make our communication around that time um, very targeted so that, so that parents will be on the lookout for that invitation coming in the mail. Okay, so then, but there's also the ability to do it online, right? Correct. So, yeah. in, in other words, you could get your invitation mid-March and immediately, that moment, go on your phone or another device and complete your census. But you would have to have that um, mailed document in order to have whatever codes or whatever you need to go online and, Correct. and do it. Okay. Correct. So, I, I want to follow up on some of the comments that have been made and just make up stuff here. So, we could have almost like census fairs at the schools, right? I mean, like special days where it's just everybody, people are there with laptops and you get an ice cream if you can get your fam your mama to come in and complete it or whatever, and then you have it, right? Um, there was, uh, there's also, you know, there's municipal elections coming up. So we might, maybe we could tag team with some of the campaign forums that might be a place to get, there will already be people who are engaged, but get them to understand how important this is so that then they would advocate to make sure that people in their sphere of influence are um, tuned in to making sure folks um, complete the census. Are we going to have videos? I, I wasn't focused enough, I'm sorry. Yeah, in the Principal Resource Center, uh, there, there is a tile being created that will be released on Friday, and it has a number of videos that we've selected from the uh, various sources that are available to us that, okay. for school use. Okay, and then I think I heard this somewhere, but just to double down on it, there is um, multiple, in addition to the education organizations Ms. Brill mentioned, there's also organizations of churches in each community that we need to tap into, right? And um, because I could think of three ministerial um, organizations that maybe somebody could come and make the presentation to them, and then those videos could get sent so that they're shown like every Sunday, right? Um, and then lastly, I think this is, oh, is anybody available tomorrow night to make a presentation? Okay, just tell me, because I've got, cut, okay, circles to the next thing. And thank you, Ms. Garrison, for reminding me um, that I sent an email to Early Learning Coalition about what, what are their efforts. And so I'm gonna ask Ms. Whitfield if she would circle back, cause she's our representative on ELC to push the efforts through the early childhood centers. Um, and I think I have some ideas on how we could do that, but that's in your, um, your collaboratives that you're doing. Cause my, I have one tomorrow night that's why I'm asking. And so we could get, since the early, the, the babies, are, from what I read, are most likely to not be counted, to specifically target where the babies are, right? To, and maybe get their parents. Maybe we have census day at the pre-K centers, and when, you know, mama, daddy, whoever comes pick baby up, if you complete that, you get whatever. And then your stickers come into play. I like those stickers, but I'm just saying, to go to where people are and take advantage of the electronic means is what I'm trying to coordinate in my head. So just let me know um, in whatever way you think I can help. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews. 
Yes, just to add to that, you know, I know that the libraries, but everybody can't get to the library. They try to have them centrally located, but depending on where you live, you may not have transportation and you may not be able to get on the bus. Uh, so we have all these adult uh, ed uh, sites that are open in the evening. Uh, I would like to see if it would be possible for us to have some kind of sign that says this is a census site, uh, the computer's available for you, because sometimes people don't have the, uh, the laptops or the uh, desktop computers. So some of our schools could be designated as census sites, and, and many times, especially in the Glades region, uh, the parents live right in the neighborhood. They can walk over to the school and they know that it's a census site. And especially for the evening, the, uh, the adult programs, West Tech, uh, roaring in the evening with all kinds of programs. That should be wide open as a census site for those people once they get off from work. Because people are working and they don't have a chance to get there during the day. And many of our schools are closed after a certain point. So our adult ed center should be truly utilized in the evening as a census site for those who may need to come come in and sign up. That's an idea. Mr. Manuel, so I heard them say they're working with student government. Um, for those of you that don't come to our meetings regularly, he's the supreme leader of student government for Palm Beach County. Um, so maybe you could give some thought to what you guys can do. Maybe competition between the high schools to see how many high schools can figure out how many kids they can get registered, which will include the families. Give it some thought to what student government can do to help us on this. So I was, I was actually going to see if I could ask that question. Um, Miss, Miss Kathleen V, she reached out to me, and they haven't gotten back to her yet because we've been a little bit busy on, in the student council. Um, but what I do like the sticker idea um, with students being able to show that they were accounted for in the, in the census. What I was thinking is a competition would be great. The only thing is they like to participate with incentives so if there was some kind of incentive for the winning school, that would probably be the best way to have them participate. Um, but a competition would be great. I just wouldn't know how we would measure how, like what, what the competition would be about. You understand what I'm saying? So. You're the president. I'm sure you can figure that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take it back to my um, group and we'll figure something out for sure. Thank you. Dr. Robinson. But I don't want you to underestimate um, how important your influence can be. So just think about now then the middle school students and the elementary school students, if you make it cool to get the sticker, right, and communicate to the younger students, maybe the feed to your high school, I'm just saying play with that idea because we understand that adults have to do it, but oftentimes your children nagging you can get you to do things, right? Okay. I just want you to use your influence to make it cool for the younger ones. Thank you. Mrs. Andrews. And just to make it more cool, I'd like to see how we could get a sponsor. So, you know, we have the sticker, but we may have something else that they can wear and that, you know, that they can kind of parade in for these next uh, months or so to show that they've been counted. So a sponsor might be able to get something, the sticker, as well as maybe some kind of necklace or whatever that they can wear to say, I've been counted. And it can be sponsored by some organization that actually helps our schools and our children. Well, thank you very much, all of you. I, Mr. Pretend, do you have anything else? No, no, sir. No, no. All right, thanks very much. We'll get you all stickers. Thanks. <laughs> Don't you go through. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, need a motion to adjourn the workshop so we can start the next meeting. Motion by Mr. Shaw, seconded by Mrs. Whitfield. All in favor, all opposed, motion carries 7-0. We'll call the special meeting to order.